in the context of finance the term beta refers to so i'll just let you know the answer what exactly is the answer for this question but again let me make it clear to be frank with you we have not expected this is quite out of the expectation but let me guess what do you think is the reason behind upsc looking to that extent asking this question related to financial market in the recent past you have seen there is a great amount of participation I mean the number of people who participate in stock markets has phenomenally increased in good old days it used to be really a cumbersome task okay so to connect to the markets I and mean, open demat account and simply place an order for buy or sell isn't it so lean the money from your bank account so that used to be really a herculean task but in the modern days the mobile applications has made it very easy very simple it's something like just open your mobile application place an order in amazon the same thing happens to be when it comes to various uh, mobile applications these stock brokers happens to make it much simple very easy for everyone and that's the reason there are lot many people who started investing in stock markets and pouring money and that's where i remember this good okay man mr rakesh junjunwala who says people come to these financial markets or stock markets with a lot of money and no knowledge and leave the markets with a lot of knowledge and no money people started investing but they don't understand intricacies of the stock they pick because once you happen to pick a stock that particular stock might perform and the performance of the stock depends upon various parameters and i guess you might also have come across the very popular saying never put all your eggs in the same basket never put all your eggs in the same basket what does it convey he says if you are investing don't end up placing all your savings in one particular investment so if you happen to convert all your savings in the form of gold and what if the gold prices start depreciate if you happen to simply convert all the money into one particular stock happen to buy one good blue chip stock in the markets what if that particular stock stops okay starts underperforming so henceforth the so called saying never put all your eggs in the same basket that simply signify the impact and importance of diversification so whenever you happen to invest money in the markets you are expected to diversify because there is always a risk associated when you happen to invest money in the market and this risk is broadly classified into two different types one is systematic risk the other is unsystematic risk so when it comes to unsystematic risk what constitute the unsystematic risk the risk attached with the management i mean it could be a company specific risk let's say the economy is doing exceptionally well but for some reason the management in the company is not good enough to take the advantage but it's a bad management company specific risk let's take the case in the recent past s bank when the rest of okay banks in india are resilient enough to withstand any such crisis and reporting exceptionally good amount of profits and their nps has drastically reduced but you could see the s bank has more or less converted to become a no bank of course sbi has now more or less rescued it so that's what we call as a company specific risk and the second common type of risk is the sector specific risk not the entire economy gets affected sometimes a particular sector gets affected let's say when silicon valley bank happens to collapse the signature bank in united states of america and the first republic bank so you might have noticed that there is a significant impact upon the stock prices of banking sector so not only one particular bank sbi or icici the entire banking sector has experienced such an amount of okay i mean certain amount of significant impact of volatility isn't it so that's what we call a sector specific and these are the risks that you could diversify you could overcome by simply having a great investment okay diversification but when it comes to systematic risk this is what i could call as a market risk or the economy risk now i'll take the case of russia ukraine conflict so that has resulted in a great amount of increase in commodity prices due to shortage in supply and that started having an impact on almost all the economies across the globe so that resulted except india i think most of you might be aware of the fact a large number of western countries including the i mean the majority of the developed nations do happen to more or less experiencing or about experience a recession so there are certain things that is quite under okay out of your control out of your control and there is always a limit to which you could diversify your risk and when it comes to systematic risk that is a risk that you cannot the reason is that would be a risk which is a result of the overall economic performance market and then the term beta because abhi tak i didn't introduce the term beta right and what does the beta refers to beta is simply the number that helps you understand how volatile how volatile your stock 
with respect to the market how volatile is your stock with respect to market so if the market moves up okay by what extent your stock happens to move got it so if your stock happens to have a beta of more than one does mean is relatively more volatile than compared to the market so does mean it happens to react much okay more than compared to the market so stocks which are relatively more volatile than compared to markets would have a beta significantly more than one and those stocks which move along with the markets they have a beta equal to one and less than one does mean to an extent they are independent of how the market i mean to an extent i don't mean to say they doesn't have any impact but relatively the movement is less volatile than compared to market let's say take the case a sector like fmcg what we call defensive stocks no matter whether the economy is in recession or in crisis people do end up buying these so called fast moving consumer goods like the hindustan unilever or itc if you happen to get the stock prices of these companies they happen to be relatively less volatile less volatile i don't mean to say they never gets affected but they seems to be relatively less volatile because these people happen to sell mostly the consumer goods and the necessary no matter how bad the economic performance but still people end up buying the basket of these goods that these companies sell and hence for we call such company stocks as different stocks but if you happen to notice the stocks of various banks so whenever there is any significant change in the market or impact on the market you could see these so called stock prices of hdfc icic sbi they happen to react much more than compared to the market because they happen to be these stocks are generally what we call cyclical so they happen to be influenced based on the business cycle and their volatility sometimes could be more than the market change and that's the reason okay beta is simply that number that helps in understanding or helps in evaluating how volatile is my stock in comparison to the markets so people who happen to go for investing in stocks of beta more than one that's mean the risk attached is high and you know the fact high risk more risk more returns that's it beta equal to 1 does mean the okay stock moves along okay with the markets beta less than 1 does mean relatively less risky but at the same time the returns could also be less got it so now in fact i think if you people happen to be any from commerce and economics background or finance background you might heard about a very popular valuation model called capital asset pricing model and those people okay for those i don't really need to explain the significance of it got it so henceforth what seems to be the most appropriate answer a numerical value that measures the fluctuations of a stock changes in overall stock market so that's the most appropriate answer